patellofemoral pain is the number one orthopedic complaint worldwide. So this is the patella, that's the femur. You've got patellofemoral pain, and it's primarily in this medial facet. With your alignment, I was really afraid that your kneecap was going to be clear out here. I think it's better than what I thought, but I, but I wasn't expecting or, or hoping to see that. Now, do you think this has been caused by my 10 years of... I'm not a roadie, like a racing cyclist. I'm a, I was a loaded touring cyclist yeah, for like no. 10 years. Yeah, no. Now, cycling's actually good for this. The circular motion of cycling is good for it. What's, been un, what's not good for it is the unsupported feet. We've got to get you into a, a more supportive shoe, a more supportive arch support. Um, we've got to get your glutes stronger. Um, and, and the bike fit's pretty crucial for you. I mean, okay. and, and it's not, so if we think about bike fitting, most people think about bike fitting from the XY plane, the side view. Uh -huh. Saddle height for you is important. Handlebar height for you is important. But not nearly as important as the Z plane. The front view from you is what's crucial. The way, you, remember the one third knee bit? Exactly. We, we've got to improve that as best we can. Are both legs identically problematic? No, your right's worse than your left. Really? And yet the pain seems to be in the left uh, more so. Yeah, like I say, it doesn't, make, it doesn't always make sense. Okay. Uh, maybe because of this leg you've been dominant on the left side, who knows? Pedal choice is important. Shoe choice, uh, arch support choice. Those things are all really, really important for you. Now, you're also really small, mm -hmm. which means one, for, one issue for you is we want a really narrow stance width for you. You get a very narrow pelvis, uh, your knees are close together, but yet bikes are built for the average male. Yes. Um, so our, your stance width is going to be an issue. I mean, it's very, very difficult to narrow stance widths. Your biomechanical findings are at the root of your, of your knee pain. Um, if you were a hiker or a downhill skier or a telemark skier, man, we, we, you'd be having a whole lot more trouble than you're having. Right. You know, the bike's going to be your friend. You should not be a runner. As okay. a woman, as a middle-aged woman, you do need some heel strike exercise. So a couple days a week, you should walk. Right, right. Now I like walking. Yeah, we good. all walk. Like That's yeah. easy. Now the look, the Shimano cleats I've been using, I always have it really loose. But when you're talking about another kind of cleat, another kind of shoe, are you talking about one that lets you do it this way or just holds the foot tighter? I've always had my cleats loose because we're, we're fearful of getting locked in and when you get when you get off your bike. But having your cleats loose does not dictate the exit force, mm -hmm. you know, the disengagement force. That's, that's, that's a totally different adjustment. So okay. having, having cleats loose usually um, means that you can't find the happy cleat placement. In other words, nobody needs a, a, a more than four or five degrees of float. This way? Yeah. You need a, a real cycling shoe. And, and what's a real cycling shoe? Is that uh, a with, CD or is that anything? With a, um, uh, you need a carbon or more rigid plastic sole, one made for cycling, not one made for walking. They provide for you far better biomechanical support. Okay, well that's... So, um... a shoe that's made for walking, so let's talk about walking for a second. Mm -hmm. So, the foot, pretty good design for walking. Mm -hmm. It absorbs energy, right. right? The arch absorbs energy and gives that energy back to you as you push off. We don't want that to happen in cycling. We don't want to store energy in the arch. Right. We want to deliver energy to the pedal. Um, uh, the forefoot's angulated, and there's, there's lots of things about the foot that in cycling need to be supported. You have less than ideal biomechanics, mm -hmm. so the only place we have to support those is at the foot. That shoe is a real compromise. It's really made for walking. I mean, oh, absolutely. I mean, that, yes. that doesn't give us a good... I definitely chose it for the, the lifestyle I lead. This is a specialized body geometry shoe, however, this particular variety of shoe did not have all of the body geometry features. It doesn't have the forefoot cant in it, it doesn't. So, uh, this torsional instability, yes. you, need, you need to think about, and Avery will help you think about that, a real cycling shoe with a real pedal, uh, not just a little dot pedal. The end bike fit should include those pedals. The recommendation is gonna be shoes and pedals. And it's an expensive recommendation because stance width for you is gonna be crucial. The narrowest stance width out there is the titanium short axle speed play pedal. Right. They're very expensive. And the bottom bracket, if it's more narrow, absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you're running a triple chain ring, that puts your feet farther out. The farther we get your feet are apart, the more that this is going to happen. So you've got patellofemoral pain. Uh -huh. Part of it's malalignment, and part of it is wear. 
that's already occurring, just age-related wear. Cycling's good for it, but you need a far better uh, uh, relationship to you and your bike at the pedal interface, which includes stance width, arch support, canting, and the size of the cleat, and having the cleat um, where it has an end point uh, to float. How many hours a year do you spend riding your bike? Oh, I don't know, but I, ride, I don't have a, haven't had a car for 20 years, so the bicycle then is my... Then you're a serious cyclist. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I think, you, I think you've underestimated mm -hmm. your... Um, you've tried to downplay, you've tried not to be a, a lycra-clad racer guy, but yeah. yet you've chosen a, a, a cycling lifestyle for commuting, right? Yeah. That's right. Uh, I think you you underestimated the importance of your of your cycling position and of your cycling equipment. I see the need for a, someone to develop a shoe which is uh, an all rounder yet provides the features that you actually described. Um, you could clip off a whole, you know. <laughs> so. There are there are better systems than what you have. Now, are you a bike rider, or do we have to ask you? Well, we, I have one. Okay. Um, I have a pocket rocket. Um, I've had it since 19, what was I trying to know the national name, but probably about 1992, uh -huh. I would guess. I was traveling with the national cycling team as the uh, medical director for USA Cycling, so I had my, we'd be gone for weeks on end, I had my clothes bag, I had my medical bag, mm -hmm. and a giant bike bag, and that didn't work. So uh, Hans and the guys at Bike Friday um, got me a pocket rocket, which I rode all over the world with the national cycling team, wow. um, and it was it was huge. And then I began to <laughs> then I began to lend it out to all my traveling colleagues. So it has kind of come the uh, uh, the, the lend out bike um, <laughs> for my team. Um, I'd have to say that I haven't ridden it in probably ten years. Oh, okay, it's all um, right. We'll edit that out. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That's okay. But, but I mean, we found that people like me, women, have been able to fit. Much better on a small wheel bike. Sure. You said. So, um, sure. But it's sense. not all. It's not just because of the small wheels. It sounds like you it's need not, extra it's, consideration. It's not it? just. It's not just because you're. A, it's not sexual. It's sexual at all. It's not gender related. It's really size related. Yes. Yeah. It's really Although size. We, there are small men, and there are. And we did a bike that recently on a, a six foot four woman. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Who took the? You know, she pushed our limits to the at the other end of things. So. Uh, I think it's it's more it's not about so much about gender. We we think about saddles in, in relation to gender, and it's not about gender at all. Although the the cutout in the genital area should vary a little bit from men to women, yes. but as far as size of saddle, shape of saddle, and all those things are really not gender based. It's more about pelvic width than pelvic shape. Mm. So those are just I mean I can launch off like that, but I can't. When I was in Europe with my bike Friday and uh, with all the world championships and all these things, and the European mechanics found it very clever and they always wanted it because they could fold it up and put it in their van right. for, for races where they you know not let, they don't necessarily have access to, to vehicles so they needed to, to get around so they thought the, the bike party was very clever but uh, one of the guys told me it looked like I'd lost my job in the circus <laughs> oh and they, yeah and they let me keep my bike yeah we you had all that well yep. she's on half a bike where's the rest of your bike yeah you know yeah yep. <laughs> No, they're, they're a clever machine, no doubt about it. Uh, I actually saw them in, in a retail setting, um, so non-custom. That's right, there's a small, medium, large now, yeah. uh, as well as the custom, and he's got the, the fast folding ticket, and we have a long month deal at Campus Cycles in Denver. Yeah. So they're now being sold uh, in, in... Well, I guess that would make sense. I was at um, the Spokesman in Santa Cruz where I did a presentation. Yeah, think, they, yeah, they had them. That's one of our deals. Yeah. yeah so it's getting there. Yeah. Well, I, I'm particularly interested, as I said, in the elder, you know, the aging cyclists, and also people who physically have physical compromises, and the dwarf yep. population, which yep. you probably work with. No, uh, we, I said, not I've at all. Never That's a great section. So they need exercise. They often have a Absolutely. lot. Yeah, uh, we a lot of skeletal problems, right? We built a pocket rocket for a four foot six guy, so he could ride El Tour de Tucson with his four, six foot four brother, Dan Ogun. That's great. And now we've yeah. even we, we go to the conference every year. It's going to be you. You got to go. It's the most life changing thing. Can you imagine being surrounded by? 2,000 people, all this tall, no. it's life-changing. Sounds like, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what was the movie? Lord of the Rings. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>